Hello everyone, okay, I hope uh, everyone is enjoying their quarantine. You're going to see that I maybe enjoy mine a bit too much, but we'll get to it. And uh, if you're watching this from way from the future, just so you know, uh, essentially the planet ended in the year 2020. So if you're watching this after this year, you're most likely in the matrix, but maybe in some type of other dimension, I wouldn't know. So just so for your information. Now. Uh, what I'm going to talk about today is about uh, two things. Uh, I've been to I've been working on a lot on Docker lately, and I figured uh, why not uh, give a little demo on it, uh, show how it works, and also give a real use case, like a real application that you can package using Docker, that you can containerize using Docker. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about uh, configuring this application. It's going to be an Emacs, obviously. Uh, and then we're going to see how that works out. So for us to start then, first thing, is if you want to work on Docker, then you obviously need to install it. So if you're one or if you are on Windows, for example, you can install it uh, normally through the internet. So you go to Google and you search for Docker. I think it's the first entry. Uh, let's hope my internet doesn't go wild on me. I think it will. Let's give it a second. While that loads, uh, okay, it's good. So you're going to go to the Docker website and then they have the binaries. If you're on Windows or if you're on Mac OS, you're going to install it over here. Put it in full screen. You have, uh, I suppose you have your get started here. I don't know where the link is, but it's somewhere in there. So you're going to go on that getting started. You're going to install the binaries. Otherwise, if you're on Linux, you're obviously going to use uh, your package manager so for those of you who are on Ubuntu you're usually going to do a sudo apt install and then you're going to give it docker io I believe it's it's the name of the package it's either docker io or docker they change the names from version to version it depends and if you are on void linux you're going to do an xpps install dash s and you're going to install docker that's all uh, those of you on arch you know how to install an arch uh, Pacman, the SYU, I suppose. And uh, with installation uh, done, I already did mine, so here's my Docker version. Now what we're going to do is going to try building a container and containerizing our Emacs. So in order to do that, I'll go to Documents Docker. I'll make a new directory called Emacs Test. Now, um, the way in which we work with Docker is whenever we want to package an application, we're going to put it inside a container and we're going to, uh, first of all, we need an image from which to start our container, right? So, uh, for example, if I want to start a very simple container, uh, and you can imagine containers are being very, very small VMs, except that they are virtualized differently. There are some caveats to that, but you can imagine them as very, uh, very small containerized uh, virtual machines and then you you obviously going to build them from images so the way in which you do that is for example if i want to install an image for alpine linux i'm going to do a docker pull alpine and alpine is a linux distribution it's made such in such a way that it's very light i can go to docker image ls this is going to list all the images that my docker daemon has I have a bunch of them. The most important is the Alpine. It's very light, it's about uh, 4 megs. And I can start this image as a container. If I type, for example, for example, docker run IT. This stands for interactive and TTY. So I'm opening a console-based interactive session, which means that I can type in the, in the bash terminal of this machine. And then I'm going to give it an image. So docker run IT, Alpine. If I start it, I get a bash prompt. And uh, you can see that it's a Linux machine. Again, um, this is uh, the bash prompt of the of the Alpine machine. We're running it as root, uh, nothing out of the ordinary. We have uh, our file system. Now, the way in which we use containers generally is that we use them to package single applications. So if you're in a production environment, you would most likely have uh, a container that's a web server 
in the container that's a backend, uh, say, database server, for example. And this is very useful because it allows us to isolate problems, it allows us to deploy things more quickly. These are some of the advantages. Also, running things on containers instead of on VMs means that they are more portable because all you need to do is to have that uh, Docker, Docker container engine, which is cross-platform, and it will run across all, uh, across all systems. So with that out of the way, now how do we proceed with that, Im with that I base image? How do we make uh, an application out of it? So generally the syntax is we're going to start from writing a Docker file. And this Docker file is going to contain a few statements. And these statements, they are important because they give uh, uh, to the Docker builder, let's say, uh, from which image to, uh, to make our application and also which parameters to take, which commands to run, what to do with that image. So if we do a from Alpine 3.7, this is going to, from that base image of Alpine, which is an empty Alpine uh, Linux machine, we're going to do some stuff on it. So we're going to run a few commands. And essentially what we're going to do, we're going to install Emacs. And the way in which you do that, you're going to run using the apk add command. This is equivalent to an apt install, for example. This is just the name of the package manager. And then you're going to give it Emacs, for example. And once you got that Docker file done, you're going to go to Docker build. This is the uh, this is the tool that allows you to essentially compile or build a Docker file into a real Docker image. And I'm going to give it a dash T. This stands for tag. I'm going to give this image a name once I once I build it, so that I can refer to that name la later. So I'm going to name it test Emacs. And I'm going to run this build command in this directory. And once I do that, it's going to essentially run those commands. So it's going to run the apk add and install the Emacs. And we're going to check uh, if this image has been added. So we have a new image called test Emacs. And now what we can do is we can do docker run dot dash it, same thing as before except that on this new image. Now, since, the, uh, since this image has, uh, has theoretically come pre-packaged uh, pre with Emacs, we should be able to type Emacs. And there you go, we have Emacs installed inside a container as an application. And this has already been pre-packaged before, it's available in this image that we made. So, th so this is a step in the right direction, we have Emacs. Now, what would be interesting would be for us to, whenever we run this docker run command, we don't get a bash prompt, but rather we get the Emacs itself, get the editor to open up. And uh, the way in which you do that is you edit your docker file and you add another statement which we call, which we call the entry point. And inside these square brackets, what you're going to do, what you're going to put is a command that will be run whenever you run this, uh, whenever you, you try to execute anything against this container. And in this case, we're going to tell it to run the command Emacs because this is what opens the editor. So we're going to write this. We're going to, once again, Docker build. It took into consideration our new entry point. And what we're going to do is now retry it. So we're going to do Docker run IT. Uh, and we're going to use test Emacs on this, sorry, uh, just this. And there you go. So in the second that we open up the, we call the run command, you can see that we get an Emacs on the console, obviously, right now. And this is already pretty useful because uh, if you wanted, you could, for example, export your editor to be equal to this command that way. Uh, whenever you, you call for Emacs, you're going to call for this container instead of call for the application. This has its limitations, obviously, and the most obvious of them to, to anyone who knows how Docker works is that you have no access to the file system right now. 
you can see that we don't have anything under home etsy is going to come with uh, only the default stuff so it's a very bare bones installation and it does not see what our file system sees uh, the host and the container they can't communicate they don't have a, a link in between them and if you wanted uh, there to be a link between them what you would need to do is you would need to add a volume so you can add volumes by means of the dash v flag for example and what that does, that does is it allows you to make a mapping between the host uh, directory and uh, the container directory let's say that i wanted to uh, to show my documents folder let's say that i wanted to show my documents folder to the uh, to the container what i would do is i would put my host uh, directory this is missing the user and uh, it's going to map this directory on the host to this directory the mount inside my container when i run it and we can check this by go by using test index and now if i go to find file i can look for mount and uh, all the stuff that's inside my documents folder is there so for example i could use i could open my cv and i have my cv here and you can see there's a comment here so if i wanted i could for example remove this comment i'm going to save and i'm going to quit i can try now to show that file once again And you can see that the comment is now gone the comment that used to be there so this already provides me the the idea of volumes this provides me a link between my host machine and the my my container machine so this is obviously what you would want to do you would want to have a workspace on your main machine where you would put your files and then you could edit them from the editor running on the container now the other thing that's important is to have a well in this case we're talking about Emacs and the Mac Emacs is mostly a GUI application so we would prefer to have it in GUI mode rather than in a console mode it uh, offers us a bunch more stuff it allows us to view images and all this kind of stuff so it's really uh, an improvement to have the GUI version of Emacs and in order for it to happen you need uh, a few different things I'm going to show you just uh, what this would look like in the end so if you went and did this what you need to pay attention to is that you need to install on your docker file the emacs x11 client because this is what gives you the graphic capabilities and then this line here is also important this is essentially a copy statement and the, the, name, the name is kind of self um, self describing you essentially can copy a file from the source folder from the place where you're building your template inside the file system of your of your container in this case i know that uh, since the only user in the container is root i'm going to put it in the whole in the root home folder so with this i'm copying this little config that's all uh inside my application inside my emacs application and then what i and then once this is done i can do a docker build to build this docker file it's Emacs Alpine and everything is good so it builds this new image and um, it has this updated Emacs the only thing that we need to pay attention to is that in order for the for the screen let's say for the display of the dot for the, of the container to sync up with the display of the real machine so that we can have a window come from the container we needed to also set some variables and that's what I did uh, here so what this does is essentially you use the dash e flag to set environment variables the variables that uh, again a, a normal Unix machine uses for example display on a regular Linux machine is set to semicolon 0.0, .0. you can see like this so nothing out of the ordinary 
and the only difference is that you need to add this Linux, uh, this Unix uh, keyword in front, just so that uh, it knows that it's a Unix uh, display. But it, it, it could also be a win. Uh, it could also be something different. And then you set your U name and your G name to be your username and your group name. In this case, they are normally both your username. It, it may depend. And uh, one last thing that we need is we need to synchronize on Linux. We need to synchronize the X11. Uh, the X11 socket file and I happen to know that uh, this socket file is located at x11 dot uni uh, slash uh, sorry dash uni unix and it's point and uh, I'm going to map this same uh, this same file to this same file on the container and if this runs well at the end there we go I have Emacs running as a GUI application inside a container. Since I haven't, uh, since I haven't mounted anything else, it's not going to show any files. But if I add that last thing, if I add, um, oh, I'm going to map this to mount. I can now go to the mount. And you can see that I have a few files here that I can edit. I can go back to my CV. And there you go. I can save that. And once again, I can go to my documents. I added. I can edit files on my computer as long as I put them in this file, as long as I put them in the correct folder that's mapped to my container. So this should be most of it. I think this was a better quick view of what a Docker can do and how it can help you run whatever application. In this case, as used, I used Emacs as an application. I don't necessarily think that the best way to use, uh, to use it is this. It, it can work, again, it needs some improvement. I, I may even make a follow-up video telling about what improvements I think I would make if I, would to read, if I were to really implement this. But if you're, say, on a Windows machine where uh, Emacs support is kind of itchy, I think that uh, this is a good solution. It's a cross-platform uh, solution, obviously, so it's always useful. And um, it's very simple to containerize, and it's, pre it's very nice if, you're, if you want to, for example, have a, a consistent build of Emacs that you use across several machines because then you can also package your configuration you make both your configuration and your image into a github uh, into files on a github repository and then you can more or less uh, just git clone your stuff and have a ready-made Emacs for you so um, this is what I wanted to show you just uh, so that you have a better idea of how docker works and how you can package your, app your applications using it I hope uh, that you learned something from this. I hope that this was useful. And bye-bye. See you next time.